course it's a rainy day. Of course it is. It's uh, it's Georgia in the middle of summer. So uh, what else can you expect? But we're here and we've got a disc brake conversion for the back of my 1938 Chevy sedan. It's got a Dana 60 in the rear. 1970s-ish Dana 60, not entirely sure. Casting numbers are ground off, that's what I think. And the bolt pattern fits for around that era. So, 1970-ish Dana 60 rear disc brake conversion from lug nut 4x4. Passenger side is already done. I already installed it. That way I get all the kinks out of the way, you know, before I uh, show you guys what to do. It's a really simple kit, as you can tell. Um, and if you've been looking at them, it's cheap and simple and pretty heavy duty. I did have to tap the flange to accept the bolts. Don't know why. Um, not a big deal to me because I just have a tap. It takes an extra two minutes, but I did have to do that ahead of time. I learned that after taking the rotors and calipers and the whole hub assembly on and off like 15 times but and i also had to run spacers in between the flange and the caliper mounting bracket here's the setup generic sockets get the wheels off uh bolts flanges lock nuts seals i got some grease for the wheel bearings might as well repack the wheel bearings brake cleaning obviously torque wrench hammer sock or impact big impact jack, rotor, calipers, and uh, generic brake hoses and bolts to weld on to weld those hoses onto the banjo bolts. And then obviously the mounting bracket. So also make sure you wear Crocs. It's a, it's a necessity when working on cars. It's a new thing. Let's get to the wheel. Let's get to taking this off and getting these old drums off. First things first, don't mind the shitty tattoos. They're there and they're out. Don't mind looking at them. We're gonna focus on the wheel, I promise. As you can tell, this socket has seen better days. It came with this eBay lug nut kit, so uh, it's where it is. Snapped it, just rewelded it. Nice little bugger weld, lasted two years so far, so. It's all it takes for shrinking things. All right, you guys aren't gonna have these spacers. I just have them on here because I like the look of them. And uh, you know, space is that. So you guys probably won't have these, so let's zap these off real quick. Next up, gotta take the axle out, the axle shaft, and uh, this by no means requires a impact wrench. But it's out, so just don't look if it, it's going to piss you off. Just don't look. <laughs> All right. Now is the most fun part, or the least fun part, but uh, find your most broken jagged screwdriver that you don't give a shit about and if you can't tell you're gonna have to beat these folds back that way you can get that uh, lock nut off take that safety clip off and then get the preload nut off it's not hard it, I don't know why I act like it's difficult and I like using one that's bent at an angle so you can kind of get that lip as in uh, this one's broken and this is what I only use it for so but all it takes is a little bit of massaging and you'll get the clips back and uh, yeah once they're off you just take the nuts off so using the same bashing technique so So I never bought the you know two and a half inch socket, whatever it is to get these nuts on, which kind of sucks for like getting actual preload and uh, taking them on and off. But 
it takes five minutes of a screwdriver and a hammer so not the end of the world don't spend don't feel like spending the money for it when you don't need to all i'm doing is putting these in a nice safe dry spot for now i mean they're going to be covered in gear oil so it's not like it really matters but nice safe dry spot with that being said let's look inside the wheel and uh, figure out what we're going to do next it's really simple so you see this wheel bearing right here this outer wheel bearing is going to fall out as soon as i take the hub off hub is about to come off with the drum and i'm going to catch that wheel bearing get ready to pack it when uh we're ready to reinstall it but that's getting ahead. like i said wheel bearing falls right out this will need to be packed obviously and we can set this aside for now we have to take the hub off this drum and all you do is bash out these wheel studs and i'm actually going to reuse these wheel studs but all you do is bash them out and reinstall them in the new rotors so let's get to using the hammer let's go ahead and take the rest of this drum assembly off all it is to take the drum assembly off is these four bolts so I'm gonna zap those off they're, I mean, they're nuts. They're nuts on the bolt. I'm sorry, let me be correct. So all we're gonna do is zap those nuts off the bolts and then, uh, you guessed it, bash those bolts out of that flange because we're not gonna need those anymore. We got replacements. They're all off, which means we can set them aside. And wada bing, wada boom. Don't need this drum or parking brake cable, so we're gonna go set it aside. means we can take this hub, set it here for now, set the drum aside. We're gonna take our wheel studs, as you can tell, set them aside like everything else. And we're gonna get to bashing this seal and uh, wheel bearing out and it's uh, easier than you think Like everything else you just uh, Take a little hammer Do a little yoga grab a chisel Find the back of the wheel bearing try and not put it at one point so you don't break it and uh, Hit it Bada bing bada boom Probably not the approved way to do that, but um, this seal was actually uh, pretty new and uh, pretty good. But they come with new ones, so it takes 30 seconds to take it off and put it in. So off to the trash this one goes. Oh, it's wheel bearing. You can check it out. You can just drop it on the ground, you know, ding it up. You know, try and make it as possible before you put it back in your nice new disc brake conversion. But everything seems fine in it. None of the, all the rollers are there. Just gonna pack this one as well when we get to packing and uh, reinstall. I almost forgot, you gotta take these wheel um, studs out because you don't need them anymore for the disc brakes. Done. Now, now then, we got the whole, this whole driver's side to 60 completely broken down. Trying to save the oil with the pan. What to do to reinstall? We're gonna pack both these wheel bearings, the outer and the inner, and uh, Put them aside, put the outer one in, put the new seal in the hub, put the hub in the rotor, and uh, we're going to make some progress. Alright, back of the hub, really simple. It's tapered, can't, in case you can't tell, you should probably clean it out more than I did. Um, that's just old grease, but wheel bearing goes in tapered side down, and you put the new seal in. You guessed it, the seal with the kit comes pre-fitted and uh, all you do is set it in place, grab your favorite hammer and hit it a few times. Just like that, seal's in place, wheel bearing's in place for the inner hub wheel bearing and this is good to get pressed into the rotor. All right, in terms of rotor going onto the hub, Back side of the hub goes flush with goes flush with the face of the rotor like that. As you can tell, looks like this from the side. Line up the holes and take your wheel studs, all eight of them, and uh, drive them drive them home with a hammer. It's that easy.
Is he gonna save any? All right. It's getting dark out, and I don't want to get rained down again, so I went ahead and just threw the flange on. Like I said, I used two washers to space it out because uh, that's what the test fit on the other side came out to be. Don't know why it's like that. It's supposed to fit normally, so um, that's my situation. I'm sure everyone's is different. I'm sure some people's will fit perfectly, but uh, just the way it works when you measure out the caliper trying to get it perfectly even. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the hub back on and put the front wheel bearing in and all the lock nuts and uh, we'll move forward. Again, one side's tapered inside the hub and uh, make sure you put the tapered side in. It doesn't fit without it, so you can't really fuck up too hard. In terms of preload on this hub nut, all I do is get it finger tight, knock it, quarter turn with the screwdriver trick and then knock it back an eighth of a turn and I count that as preload and uh, it's worked out so far so that's my secret to doing it everyone's is different and uh, yeah so we're gonna get this figure tight uh, preload it put the lock nut on put the other one on load the lock nut or load the last nut the safety nut and bend those little ears back and we'll be in business you can go ahead and put the axle back in or put the caliper on first. Axle shaft going back in. When you feel it hit the pinion, all you do is find the sweet spot while you push in and it'll click right into place exactly where you left it. We got that axle shaft back in, torqued down to spec. You can tell on the other end, you can see it's been the tires. Everything's lined up and meshed properly. We're gonna go ahead and throw the brake caliper back on, throw the wheel back on, and we'll be done with this job. That's the caliper back on, and we are good to go to reinstall the wheel. There you go. Tires are back on. That's how the back of it looks. Nice and pretty, just like the other side. All that's left is to install the banjo bolt on the end of the caliper right there, run the lines to the back of the axle, weld those on, and we will be good to go on that disc brake conversion. Like always guys, have a great day. Stay tuned, like I said, brake video's coming up soon for the whole brake system. All the plumbing of the lines, bleeding all that stuff, putting the pedal and the assembly in, and you know, generic everything else to do. So stay tuned. A lot more to come on this 38 sedan. Oof. 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 Yeah, our driveway is a little stacked at this point, but you know, you know, who can complain? <laughs>